Hey guys, thanks for checking out this tutorial. My name is Casey Ferris. Today we're addressing something that I have been asked exactly three jillion times, which is not a real number, but you know what? This is the internet, so anything's possible. And that is matching shots. Shot on different cameras, different lighting, all that stuff. This is one of the most basic things that you need to be pretty good at if you want to do any type of color work, especially if you want to be like a full-time colorist, you better be pretty good at this. So I have a couple shots here from a recent video that I made for Heart Support, and they help counsel younger people in the music scene with things like depression and self-harm and suicide and things like that. So they're doing some really awesome stuff, so make sure to go and check them out at heartsupport.com. But here I have three shots. This is kind of an interview piece. So I have my wide shot, and I have a close-up, and then I have this B-roll shot that's gonna be kind of interspersed. This is shot on the Blackmagic Production 4K, and this is the Blackmagic Pocket Camera. This is also the 4K. So we have slightly different cameras and definitely different times of the day. So I'm gonna start just by putting a LUT on top of this because this is shot in BMD film. And so I'm gonna to go to 3D LUT and pick a GC BMD film to Rec. 709. You can download this LUT along with a bunch of other LUTs for free at groundcontrolcolor.com. Just click on free LUTs. And this LUT is the Blackmagic BMD Film 2 Rec. 709 LUT. There's also quite a few LUTs for different types of cameras. They have a CineStyle for Canon cameras, Protune for GoPro. We also have CineLike D for the uh, Panasonic cameras and a few other ones as well. But this gives us a nice starting point. And I'm just gonna copy the grade to this other one and just flip back and forth between the shots. So it's not terrible. Um, but this shot seems to be a little bit cooler than this shot just at first glance. This one definitely is coming out a little bit cooler. So yeah, we have a couple problems we wanna fix. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pick one of these shots and then I'm gonna make it look good and then I'm gonna match the other shots to that shot. That's a pretty common way to do things and it's really nice because you can match your whole movie to that one shot and get a pretty consistent look. So I'm just gonna hide my clips here so we can zoom in a little bit and I'm just gonna focus on this shot. And remember, I have my LUT on this already. So I'm gonna make sure my blacks are at a good level and I like those. And I'm gonna bring down my gain and see if I have any more detail in the sky. Looks like I got some. I'm gonna boost up my gamma a little bit and maybe warm up my gain just a little bit. Maybe something kind of like that. Boost my saturation just a little. And I'm not too worried about brightening his face or anything like that. This is just kind of a basic primary grade. I'm gonna make sure my shadows are balanced. It looks like they're a little bit cool. So I'm gonna balance his shirt a little bit and that definitely helps. So I have a look that I want on one of my clips and now I wanna match everything to this clip. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up my gallery and I'm gonna grab a still so that I can save this and use it as a reference switch to my other shot, and then I'm gonna right click on my viewer and say show reference wipe. And that's gonna bring in my still so that I can do a side-by-side -side comparison. And now I'm gonna compare these two shots. And remember the one on the left is the one I'm matching to, and this is the shot that I'm actually working on. I can kind of quickly see what needs to happen on my new shot here. So I'm gonna to go to my first node, and definitely needs to be probably saturated, needs more contrast, and needs to probably be warmer. So I'll start by bringing my shadows down just a little and bringing my gain up and bringing my gamma down just a little and warming up my gain. And I'm just visually matching these right now, trying to get kind of in the ballpark. And then I can do some tweaks afterwards. I always wanna go back and forth to kind of compare them. And so far that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna get rid of my reference wipe. Now I can hit up and down on the keyboard and see if it matches. And what you'll often find is that it looks good split screen, but one right after another, it looks weird. And the one that really counts, honestly, is the back and forth because that's how people are gonna watch it. They aren't gonna watch it on a split screen. So um, this looks too warm. So what I'm gonna do is cool down my gamma just a little bit and go back and forth. And what happens is you'll start to go crazy and start trying to fix problems that are either there or might not be there. And sometimes, honestly, it's a good idea just to reset your node and start from scratch one more time. Because what you'll end up doing is finding a bunch of ways that you definitely don't wanna grade it. And then you can kind of get to a good place where you actually like what you're doing. 
And this is definitely closer than I've been the whole time and it took two tweaks. And that's what color grading is actually like and that's what people always cut out of their tutorials. But that's what it's like. So I'm gonna switch back and forth now and look at that, pretty decent match. And eventually you'll get it to a point where you like it. And the good thing is if you have repeating shots like a bunch of this shot and a bunch of this shot, then you can just copy your grades over. And now for the second part, which is matching to the B-roll, which in some ways is harder because it's a completely different setup, but in some ways it's easier because it's harder to actually notice if you don't get it right on because it's such a different environment. You just have to kind of get it in the ballpark to make it seem like that could exist in the same world. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna right click and say show reference wipe and just grab that same shot and I'm gonna work under the let and I'm gonna do my big time adjustments. Definitely needs to be warmer. Probably bring down the gain a little bit. Bring down my gamma. And because I have this, you know, slightly lifted blacks look, I'm gonna to go to my scopes and compare my black levels in between these shirts. You can see this shirt is definitely darker and cooler than this shirt. And that's what the scopes look like too. So I'm gonna grab my lift and try and balance them, balance these two little spots, these two little spots, and these two little spots to kind of equal them out. I'm also gonna lift them up to that level. And I'm just looking at the scopes right now. But if you get them to pretty much match up with the other side, then you're gonna have a pretty good match in the shot. And now I'm just comparing these visually, trying to keep my consistent blacks. And so even though this shot is a little bit brighter, we're gonna be fixing this shot later with secondaries. So I'm gonna kind of excuse that. But as far as you know, the saturation and the color tones, Looks like that could be in the same world. I might just warm up my gamma a little more. So let's compare this with the other shots. There's these two shots. Those could definitely be in the same world. Again, this is a little bit dark on his face. This shot's actually a much nicer shot. So what we can eventually do is do our secondaries on his face here and kind of try and bring his face up to a nice level that matches a little better. So from there, it's just fixing problems with the production, like doing secondary work, things like that. But these exist in the same world. So let's take a look at before and after. So we go from this to this. Definitely a big difference. So I hope that helps you out with your shot matching needs. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to hit like. And if you want more videos on color grading, post-production, editing, and um, things involving chocolate, go ahead and subscribe. I can't promise the chocolate part. Once again, I'm Casey Ferris. I'll catch you next time.